Hey there, Gemma. Let's take a look at what you've done here in this next set of essays. The first topic is online transition apps. Here's what you wrote. Experts throughout both the developing world have debated whether the use of internet language translators brings people more advantages and disadvantages. I personally believe that the benefits are enormous and outstand the weak points. This as it will discuss both sides, using examples from the Spanish Tourism Office and Cambridge University to demonstrate points and prove arguments. Okay, this is fine. They have asked you if the benefits outweigh the disadvantages, so you must obviously um, describe both, both the disadvantages and the advantages. So what you wrote here is fine, no problems. Okay, let's move on. On the one hand, there is ample evidence that digital communication, digital communications tools are used daily by travelers around the globe. These apps are helping European tourists, especially in East countries. Well, no. These apps are, mm, these applications, really just write the word out, it's better. Um, these applications help European tourists, comma, especially in, what does that mean, East? You either mean Eastern countries or Far East or Middle and Far East countries, but East countries doesn't really carry any meaning. Asian languages can be really difficult to learn and to understand for English and Spanish speakers, and smartphones have brought the facility to communicate anytime, anywhere. For example, recent empirical research by the Spanish Tourism Office demonstrated that 99.5% of Spanish citizens who travel to China, India, and Japan for business or leisure used Google Translator Capital Capital. Uh, for, no, that's awkward for getting food. To get food in restaurants, as well as to get directions on the street and to speak in meetings. All right, let's see. Um, use Google Translator to get food in restaurants, directions on the street, and speak in meetings. That was a nice way you could have done it. Not so wordy. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that when it comes to travel, having a device that shortens the language barrier is extremely helpful. Um, you don't really shorten a barrier. You you um, maybe shrink or maybe you lessen, but I don't know if shorten is the right word here. All right, let's move on. Other than that, it's fine. It's really lovely, Gemma, okay? So let's see what else you wrote. On the other hand, in terms of learning a new language, these could slow down the process. Translators could become a temptation, reducing the effort in the communication process. This is largely because, get rid of that comma, no effort is required when an idea is typed and the meaning of it pops out, out straight away. For example, a study carried by, carry out a study. So a study carried out by Cambridge University showed that 54% of foreign students fail to write accurately in English without the use of digital translators. Consequently, it is possible to state that beyond doubt, the largest drawback to such technologies that people could fail to learn a language fluently. Okay, good. All right, we'll look at it a little more in depth in a minute. Uh, to conclude from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that although the use of digital language translators could delay the learning process of a new language, all right, here you need a comma. The advantages are invaluable to all the people that need to communicate in a language different than their mother tongue whether it is for le leisure, business, or social, or political reasons. Okay, that's fine. Now, um, you saw me pause a little bit when I got to the end of this paragraph. Let me show you why. Look at this um, last sentence here. This is the command in your essay. This is what... Um, this is where the essay is telling you exactly what it wants you to talk about and when it tells you exactly how you need to develop this. So. It wants you to talk about benefits. It wants you to talk about disadvantages. So plural benefits, plural disadvantages, and then tell us which one is stronger. So that's what I just want to double check about. Did you in fact talk about more than one benefit and more than one disadvantage? Now, looking at this paragraph, in, in essence, it looks like you've really basically talked only about one advantage and that it helps people uh, who are travelers, who um, are working in languages quite different from their own. So that's essentially one advantage, unless you could say, turn around and say to me, no, Ellen, look, I've broken down the advantage into several like smaller advantages and therefore some more than one. Um, 
but looking at it um, again, it looks like it's just one advantage. So again, remember it says benefits plural. You have to show that this is more than one benefit or there that there are more than one benefits to this. Now let's look at this paragraph and see what you did here. You said that it slows down the process of learning a language um, and you explain why. Let's see. So you see, this is really kind of um, troubling because what you've done is you've developed your ideas really quite well. The problem is, is that you're not talking about benefits. You're talking about one benefit and here you're clearly talking about one disadvantage. So while you do quite a good job of developing those particular advantages and disadvantages, you're not in fact doing what the essay has asked you to do which is talk about benefits plural and disadvantages plural. You've just developed really well just one of each of them, okay? So I want you to be careful about this because this is the kind of thing that an examiner, no matter how much it pains him or her, is going to have to mark you down for, okay? So be aware of it. You might have to do a little less in terms of developing each individual idea, but you do have to supply more ideas, okay? So let's take a look at your task one here. This is the school subjects in Germany. 155 words is what you say it is. I'll believe you. The pie chart presented shows a percentage of interest for four for seven subjects among German students in the year 2000. In the year of, you didn't need that of here. Just get rid of it. The information could be presented in three groups, where history and PE were the most popular subjects, with nearly half of the acceptance. That's the wrong word. Not acceptance. It should be popularity having practically the same results that's still the wrong word here with practically the same results okay followed by the second group this is not a full sentence careful followed by the second group conformed by maths that's the wrong word here followed by the second group uh comprising maths and physics that also showed a similar pattern to that of the first group with almost an equal percentage of acceptance per popularity is the right word here with 19.5 and 18.1 each. Finally, the third group conformed, no, again, wrong word, by biology with 7.1, geography with 6.4, comma, you're missing, it. oh, there it is, and IT with 3.7, and represented 15% among the three, getting the smallest part of the fraction. That's right, it's awkward. Overall, it is clear that in German schools in 2017, history and PE represented the largest portion of the interest with nearly 50%, whereas IT undoubtedly was the least popular. Uh, no, don't use the word fraction. I want you to use the word figure. Figure is a great word which covers all needs. So it could mean percentage, it could mean um, fraction, it could mean number. So it's a wonderful word to use when you're trying to kind of vary up your um, vocabulary. Uh, of the pie with only 3.7 of the attention. All right, attention is the wrong word. I've already told you that. You use the word attention multiple times or acceptance as well. It should be popularity because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about popularity. I don't want you to be worried about using it. Use the word popularity. There's really not, or preference, I think it was the other word, right? Popularity. Yeah, you could have also said preference. That would have also been good. So either one of those, popularity, preference, just you know, kind of interchange those and you would have been okay. Now, I got to be honest with you and tell you that I'm not super thrilled with the way you did this. Um, let's see. So again, it's that word choice. First of all, you should have used the words popularity and preference rather than um, acceptance and attention. Um, and now another thing I didn't really like is I didn't like the way you grouped all of this. I didn't think that was such a good idea. Why? Because grouping is a wonderful thing to do and it's an important and it's a necessary thing to do when you have many categories. So um, when you have tons of data, yes, you should group things together in order to make sure that you're covering everything you're supposed to cover but also not getting too, 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 too much into detail. Here you have the exact opposite situation where you have very few pieces of data. In fact, you only have seven. So what you really need to do here is stretch these pieces of data out and make uh, relevant comparisons and um, make some sorts of um, analysis that make this a little meaningful. For example, what kind of thing you could have done 
one thing you could have done rather is you could have mentioned that IT, which was the least popular, was um, half of the next least popular, which was biology, okay? Because this is kind of double this. Um, another thing you could have said is that IT, which was the least popular, was seven times less than the most popular, PE. Biology was just um, one third of that figure. All right, so these are some of the comparisons you could have made. Um, so when you get to that figure for IT, you could have said, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, about um, IT, which was just one seventh of the highest figure PE at 22.9. Okay, so those are the kinds of connections that you wanna be making here. You're gonna really try to extend all of this out uh, so that you're providing meaningful connections and comparisons here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so while I understand why you decided to use this whole three groups thing, I didn't think it was the smartest choice. Um, you should have probably done this a little differently so you could have stretched out a little more. Yeah, I know you're over the minimum word count. You're at 155, but that doesn't mean that because you've reached the word minimum that it's an acceptable development of the of each um, category for the examiners. Remember, it's the word minimum. It's not like the preferred word count, okay? So keep that in mind too. Um, other than that, good job. So go ahead, Gemma, and correct these. Let's see more work from you. And uh, we'll be waiting to see what you write next time. Okay, good luck.